Hello everybody. Um, today I have a quick 20 minute uh, post cardio yoga routine. So if you just want to run, if you've been killing it on the elliptical, or maybe you've been doing the row machine or just dominating some stairs on the stair climber, whatever, this is a perfect post cardio yoga stretching routine for you to do afterwards to get those legs stretched out, get the legs stretched out and uh, make sure that you are decreasing your amount of soreness for the next day. So first, we want to get our heart rate down because I know you guys are your blood's pumping right now, your heart rate's elevated, and you don't want to do anything that would put your head beneath your heart just yet until we get your heart rate brought back down. So we're going to start standing in mountain pose, feet are hips width apart, roll the shoulders back and down. We're going to take the arms inhaling up to exalted mountain and then we're going to take the left hand over to the right temple take the right hand back down to the ground and then we're going to take the left ear towards the left shoulder so probably the opposite of what i'm doing i don't know if i'm mirroring you guys or not i don't know how this camera stuff works so left ear is coming towards the left shoulder Stretching the right side of the neck. And maybe if you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can take the right hand behind the body and maybe hold the left ribs for a little bit of a bind. I feel it now. Whew. Feels good though. My neck is like always tight, so I always love a good neck stretch. We're here for two more breaths. And then we'll inhale to slowly bring our head back up. We'll inhale the arms down, around and up. And we'll exhale, then press the air away. Inhale, down, around and up. And this time we'll bring the left hand to the right temple, bringing the right arm down. That's what we just did. We're going to bring the right hand to the left temple and bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. Just kidding, everybody. For a left side of the neck stretch. And if you need a little bit extra, you can wrap the arm around the back. Wrap, grab the uh, right ribs with those left fingers. There we go. Now I'm feeling a nice, strong stretch in the left side of the neck. If that's too much, just back off a little bit. You can either just take the left hand behind just like this, or you can reach all the way around. Or you can stay right here, whatever feels good. Listen to your body. Good, and then we'll release the head, bring it gently back up. Inhale, the arms down, around and up. Exhale, press the air away. Good. We'll take the feet nice and long. Grab some blocks if you have them, or you can just have the hands at the hips. We're going to take the feet nice and wide, outside edges of the feet parallel to each other. Inhale to get long. Exhale to forward fold. And then you can take the hands down to the blocks or leave the hands at the hips. We're at halfway. And then we're going to exhale all the way down. You can take the hands to the blocks and just melt into the shoulders, letting the head drop. Inhale to your half lift, press into the blocks or press into your hips. Lengthen through the spine, lengthen through the back of the neck. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Reach forward through the crown of the head. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Last time, exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, take hands to hips if you're not already there. Inhale, all the way up. Good. So, we're going to come to tabletop. Just do this the easy way. So, come to tabletop. 
Step that left foot forward in between the hands, coming into a low lunge. So we don't want to like dump into the hips here. We don't want to be too loosey goosey here. And we also don't want to be like too tall so that we're not actually feeling a stretch. So if we have our right hip directly over our right knee, we're not going to feel any stretch in the hip flexor. So find some place in between those two for your low lunge. And then I want you to imagine dragging that right knee forward in space. Don't actually move it, but imagine dragging it forward. And that's going to engage your inner thighs. Getting that right hip flexor stretch while still keeping the thighs, especially the left hamstring, engaged to protect. Make sure we're not overstretching. And then take the hands down to the mat and we're going to exhale to rock back into a hamstring stretch. So lift the big side or the big toe and the pinky toe side of the foot evenly up towards the ceiling. And then we'll kind of rock back and forth between the two into a low lunge. Inhale forward into your low lunge. Exhale back into your hamstring stretch or half splits. Inhale forward. Low lunge. Exhale back to your hamstring stretch. Last one. Low lunge. Exhale back. Half splits. And then we'll come back into our low lunge and we're going to heel toe that left foot to the outside of the edge of the mat. Bring that left hand inside of the left foot and we're going to let that left knee come out just a little bit to come into a lizard stretch. So we're kind of rocking onto the outside edge of that left foot. If you need a little bit more here, if you're super bendy and you need some more, you can come on to your forearms down on the mat. Or if this is not enough, but the forearms are too much, you can use a block and rest your forearms down on a block. Props are so handy. They give you like a happy medium. Okay, bring that left knee back in towards the body. Heel toe, that left foot back into your lunge position. Tuck that right toe under. Lift the right knee up off the ground. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lift the hips up and back to downward facing dog. Pedal through the feet. Get yourself a nice calf stretch. Work out those calves. Lengthening through the hamstring and the calf. You can even take the feet wide for like a wide downward facing dog, as wide as your mat, for a different kind of stretch. Notice how that feels differently. And then we'll walk the feet back in for a regular downward facing dog. And then we'll step the right foot forward in between the hands to a lunge. Lower that left knee down to the mat. Good. And we'll come into our low lunge. You can have the hands on the knees, the hands down on the mat, whatever feels good to you. Again, not like totally dumping into your hips here. Not too far back, but find yourself a happy medium. And then... Make the slight mental adjustment of imagining dragging your left knee forward in space. And you'll be amazed at what a good change that can create in the body. You're not actually moving anything, but you're thinking about moving something. And it's a small, like, energetic movement that really helps you engage those inner thighs and protect your hip flexor from overstretching it. And now we're going to plant the hands and we're going to walk them back. Lifting up the toes towards the ceiling. Big toe and pinky toe side of the foot. Lift evenly for a hamstring stretch. And we'll inhale to come back forward into our lunge. Exhale to hamstring stretch or half splits. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Two more. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Last one. Inhale forward. And exhale back. Half splits or hamstring stretch. We'll come back to our low lunge and then we'll heel toe that right foot out to the 
right edge of your mat, bringing that right hand around inside, letting that right knee come out to the side for lizard stretch. Again, you have the option to come onto the forearms or to come onto the forearms on a block. I am not that bendy. I do not have that flexibility and that is okay. This feels great to me, just right here. Lengthen through the spine, long back of neck. Press the floor away. And bring that right knee back in towards the midline of the body, heel toe, the right foot back inside of the hand. And then we're not going to tuck that back toe. We're just going to um, bring that right leg back into our tabletop. And now we're going to come into pigeon, which is my favorite stretch. I love this stretch for runners, anybody. So we're going to take the left knee towards the left wrist. And we're going to slightly walk that left foot across the body so that the left foot is right about underneath the right hip. And then we're going to walk that right leg back. And again, I don't want you to be scared of props. I don't want you to think that like props mean that I'm not cool. Props are great. Props are meant to make yourself more comfortable in the posture. So for me, my left seat does not reach the floor. So I'm going to use a prop. I'm going to grab myself a block or blanket. I have a blanket right here. So I'm going to roll up this blanket, come right back to where I was. And now my left seat is comfortably resting on this blanket. Okay? So you have that option. Use a block, use a blanket. Because when you're tense in a pose, when you're not comfortable and you're like tense in a pose, you're not breathing. And the whole point of these poses are for you to breathe breath into the body. Get some oxygen back to those muscles that you just worked so hard. And the oxygen is going to bring those, that oxygenated blood is going to help those muscles recover faster. So breathe in the pose. Use the props to help you get comfortable. If you like, you can lengthen the body forward to come in to like a, on your forearms, or maybe if you've got the flexibility, you can come all the way down. It's up to you. Find what works for you. And we'll inhale to come back up onto our hands. And if you want a little bit of a quad stretch here, you don't have to do this. This is optional. You can bend the right knee, okay, and then reach that right hand around, grabbing the inside edge of the foot, pulling that foot towards your seat. Good. You'll feel a nice quad stretch here. Trying to keep those hips square. Don't let that right hip kind of pop up, but keep them square down towards the mat. And when you're ready to release, letting, controlling the foot's descent. Don't just let it like slingshot down to the ground, but control the descent. And then if you have a prop, go ahead and move it out of the way, bring it to the other side. We're gonna step that left leg back into the tabletop. And if you want to take a quick child's pose, we can. And then when you're ready, we'll come back to tabletop and bring that right knee towards the right wrist. We're going to shuffle or shimmy that right shin at a diagonal, okay? We don't want the shin parallel to the body, okay? We want it at a diagonal so that the right foot is right about under the left hip. And then we're going to walk that left leg back behind you, kind of just like inchworm it back behind you. And like I said, my right seat, there's some space here, there's a gap. So I am going to use my prop to kind of wedge underneath my right seat so that I'm comfortable in this pose. 
And you don't need like a blanket or anything. You could use a rolled up towel. You can use your sweaty, I don't know, your sweaty gym towel if that's nearby. And then if you want to begin to hinge forward, coming onto the forearms, or maybe completely outstretching the arms and coming onto the forehead, you can do so. Nice deep breaths here. And we're going to inhale the hands back up, walk ourselves back up, and then if you're ready for the quad stretch, you can lift your left leg, bend that left knee, and then reach the left arm behind, grabbing the inside edge of the foot, pulling the left foot towards your left seat. Good. Trying to keep those shoulders and hips square to the short end of the mat. Very strong quad and uh, hip flexor stretch here. And if you can't reach your foot but you still want this quad stretch, then grab like a strap or like a belt or something. Wrap it around the foot and kind of help yourself into it. That's how I had to start with this pose. Is I used a strap to get my foot like close enough as to where I could eventually grab it. I couldn't always grab my foot. So if you're discouraged because you can't grab your foot yet, no big deal, don't be discouraged. Just use a prop like a strap or a belt or a piece of rope, you know, whatever you have nearby and use that to help you get closer to your foot and then eventually you'll be able to grab it hopefully one day. Good, and slowly let the left shin come back down towards the mat. Okay, you don't wanna just let it flop back to the mat, that's not good. And then tuck that left toe under so you can come back to your tabletop. And if you like here, maybe you want to take a few cat cows, if that feels good to you. Work out your lower back, your hips. Come back to neutral. Okay, so now I want you to flip over and lay on your back, and um, you'll need a strap for this next part, unless you are able to um, grab your big toes while your leg is extended. So if you don't have a strap like this, you can use a rolled up towel, you can use a belt, you can use a piece of rope. I know you have one of those things around your house. So. Um, press pause, go grab it if you need to, but this is a great, great set of stretches that you should hopefully be doing after every workout. So I want you to lay all the way on your back, and I want you to lift your right leg into the air, wrap your strap around the ball of your right foot, and then we're going to walk our hands as high up on the strap as we can comfortably get them. We're going to keep that left leg active. Left toes are still pointing towards the ceiling. Don't just let it hang out. Okay, keep it active. And we're just going to stay here in our hamstring stretch, allowing the shoulders to ground down towards the mat. It's okay to have a micro bend in the knee here. It's okay to have a lot of bend in the knee here. Like if you have super, super, super tight hamstrings, you can, you can be here or you can be here. That's okay. We're working towards that straight leg, okay? So no big deal. The way you get looser hamstrings is to stretch your hamstrings. Not looser. That's probably the wrong word. You don't want loose hamstrings. Healthy hamstrings. The road to a healthy hamstring is through stretching your hamstrings, but stretching them safely, okay? So now we're going to open up. We're going to take both straps into our right hand. We're going to take the left hand out to the side, left arm out to the side for counterbalance, and we're going to begin to open 
that right leg out to the side. I'm too close to the wall here, so I'm kind of running into the wall, so I'm gonna scoot. And you're gonna open that right leg as, like, as far as you can comfortably get. So when you start to feel strain or pain, back off a little bit and come to that spot right before then and use your strap to help you hold in that spot so that you're not straining. I'm here for a couple breaths. Stretching that inner hip adductor. And then when you're ready, slowly bringing that right leg back up to center. You'll take both straps into the left hand, take the right arm out to the side, and then you'll bring the right leg across the body, but we want to keep your right hip grounded down on the mat. So don't just let that right hip like pop up off the ground. You wanna keep it grounded and then stretch the right leg across the body as far as you can comfortably get while keeping that right hip grounded. And hopefully you feel a nice stretch in the IT band area, the outer hip, the abductors of the hip, the gluteal medius is maybe getting a little stretch here. I actually feel it like back around here, like in the top of my calf. I feel it behind my knee. Everyone's gonna feel the stretch in a different spot depending on you know where their tightness is. Two more breaths here. And then we'll inhale to lift the right leg back up. We'll lower the right leg down to the ground. Step the left foot into the strap and the right foot steps out. Now keeping that right leg active, we're gonna lift that left leg into the air. I'm gonna adjust my strap. Hopefully it's around the ball of your foot, that's ideal. I'm gonna grab the strap with both hands for the center hamstring stretch. Again, a micro bend in the knee is totally fine. And your upper body should be relaxed here. You shouldn't be like so high up on the strap that you're like straining in your upper body. So just as high up on the strap as you can get while keeping the upper body relaxed. Because if we're way down here, then we kind of have like a whole bunch of room for movement and we don't really want that either. So walk it up high, but not too high. We wanna keep our shoulders relaxed down on the mat. And then we're gonna take both straps into the left hand, take the right arm out to the side, and we're gonna slowly and controlled open that left leg to the left as far as you can comfortably get, keeping that right hip grounded. Right leg is still active, right toes lifted. For an inner thigh stretch. I know this is kind of slow and tedious, but y'all, this is so, so good for your body, so good for your legs, so just be patient go through the stretches, spend a couple breaths in each of these. I know it's easy to get impatient, but one of the many points of yoga is to acknowledge that impatience and stay for a couple more breaths. We're training not only our bodies, but we're training our minds to be quiet, to be at rest, to be okay with being in a pose for a long time. Inhale that left leg back up towards the ceiling. Switch the strap to the right hand. Left arm comes out to the side. Keep that left hip grounded down on the mat. Bring the leg over to the right. Oh, this is my this is my tighter side. I feel this much sooner than I did on my other side, and that's okay. A lot of times our bodies are not symmetrical. They are as asymmetrical, and so one side is usually tighter than the other and one side is more flexible than the other and that's okay. We just have to be aware of that and be cognizant and be respectful of that. So like I'm not trying to force my left leg across my body as far as my right leg went because I know that this is my much tighter side and if I do that I will probably hurt myself. So just acknowledge where your body's at and be respectful of it. 
and don't go past the point of comfort because that's when you get yoga injured and nobody wants to be yoga injured. Inhaling back to center and then we're going to slowly lower that left leg down. You can step it out of the strap. If you want to chill here in Shavasana for a minute, if you've got some time, you are more than welcome. But that is all I have for you. So thanks for stretching with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Namaste.